In today's video, it's an all-out war as we have a look at the new NECA toys, Predator Bad Blood versus Enforcer. The New Jersey Pine Barrens have become a slaughterhouse, witness to a hideous spree of murders and mutilations committed by a creature from another world, a predator. But unlike others of its species, this alien intruder is no sport hunter, but a blood-crazed psychotic, a butcher of its own kind, an unhinged killing machine. While a massive manhunt sweeps the Barrens, a stalker of a different kind searches for the killer, a second predator bent on bringing down the rogue monster. Before we have a look at the Predators and we have a look at their accessories, we're going to first figure out how tall they stand. I guess what I'll do for the Enforcer is I'll take it right to the very top, that little front spike located on the front of its helmet. We'll stop the Ultra Measuretron right there. That's going to be our place of measurement right there. And from the foot to the very top of its helmet, it stands 8.6 inches in height, which translated to centimeters, you're looking at about 22 centimeters tall. Let's switch that back over and we'll have a look at Bad Blood. I love the name for that predator. There we go. We'll take that right to the very top of its gold helmet, stopping the Ultra Measuretron right there. You're looking at a slightly increased height of 8.5 inches in height which in centimeters works out to be 21.7 centimeters tall. Both the figures come with a ton of accessories. Maybe what we'll do is we'll focus our efforts on Enforcer, then we'll beeline it over to Bad Blood. For Enforcer's accessories, the tried and true go-to of the Plasma Caster is included here, and it's done in this splendid silver. You can see all the details here really pop actually when they incorporate a metallic silver to it. It's about the same coloring as like aluminum foil. The caster cannon up at the top there does swivel all the way around. It's actually attached via a ball joint right there. And this also hinges back and forth. Of course, the same frustrations will come with trying to put this on him. There's a little notch right underneath here. And if we move his dreads, there's a secondary tab placement right there. So do your best to, I find it's actually easier if you put it in on the bottom and then stretch it across. Once you stretch it across, you line it up with that hole. You can kind of get your finger in there and just sort of push it down. Just adding a little bit extra stability to it with the hopes, with the hopes, with the hopes that it's not gonna fall over. Slightly also on an angle too, this particular caster. Looks good, goes with the rest of the metallic silver making up the armor here. What little armor the Enforcer has. Don't worry, we'll talk a little bit more about him in a second. Other accessories to come included with him is the extended spear. Now fully extended, this one does not retract, but it's also decked out in the same glorious metallic silver. Love the little smallest of details that NECA incorporates to all of their pieces. You imagine that somebody would have actually gone in there and sculpted all of this. It's quite a spectacular sight. It does hold in his hand. I can show you that in a second as well. Um, also coming included is the disc. Sort of a hyper disc, slight variation actually. You can see that it's got some electricity that's sort of running through it. By contrast, I believe this is Bad Blood's hyper disc right here. You can see the very different shape between the two. I'm assuming this one is Bad Blood's because if you kind of look at the accessories for that figure, they're a lot more cruder. I guess of the two, I would sort of consider this one to be a little bit more of the advanced variety, something that you would almost attach to the law enforcement end of the Predator clans. So I would probably assume it would be this one that's going to go included with the Enforcer, but I could very well be incorrect by that. It's been a very long time since I've read the comic. So it comes included with the figure there as well. 
you get a variation of an unmasked head sculpt. It almost kind of has a noble look to it. It would be hard to really pull and extract emotional attachment or like the feelings that this predator would have simply by a head sculpt, but it certainly looks like it's a very clean, pristine, almost not scarred at all a head sculpt here. The easiest way also to tell that this one is for the enforcer because also Bad Blood gets a variation alternate head sculpt is just look at the dreads. The dreads here are brown for the brown hair that's on the back of this predator figure and best way to figure it out. Also too, this one has some purple which a carry, carry over from the purple that's on its body. It also comes with an unmasked or mask, unmasked mask that goes with the Predator. If anybody is wondering though, it doesn't actually go on the figure. Lining it up, you can see it's very drastically different in size. Clearly by the intent that they've sculpted the interior, you can tell that NECA really was only planning for you to hold it in the Predator's hand when you opt to have it displayed unmasked. That's a nice little touch. You don't see that touch happening very often and when it does, certainly appreciate that they do do like the little fine details like that. Look at the exquisite looking interior head sculpt there. Mask sculpt. One problem though, much like the head sculpt that's currently present, is this piece of plastic right here. The sides are well enough supported against the main helmet, but it's this part here you gotta be careful about. Especially, not necessarily this helmet, but when you are taking that head sculpt off, the last thing you wanna certainly do is put your finger against it to pull it off. You probably can see right off the bat what's gonna happen for that. So there are all your accessories that come included with the Enforcer. Shaiev also, of course, forgetting to mention, he also comes included with his hand. Just a spread hand. This one actually was packaged in the packaging attached to the socket of the forearms. I've just gone ahead and taken that off for the opener of this review where I had him holding his, his spear instead. Okay, that's all of that stuff happening right there. Well, don't worry, we'll get to bad blood in a second. Let's have a look at the Enforcer. It's a nice looking predator. We've seen this design before sort of lending itself to a lot of people nicknaming this the Shredder Predator. And you could probably see where they came across that nickname. I might have even said that in the review as well. It does bear some resemblance to something that you would imagine a Shredder would look like if it was done as a Predator. Loving the purple that they've added in here. It's sort of like a light violet. I believe even Anthony's Customs mentioned that this kind of looked like blueberry yogurt. I could certainly see a little bit of blueberry yogurt happening in there. This is sort of the fruit on the bottom before you start mixing it in thoroughly. If you ever have had yogurt, do you ever just dabble a little bit at the bottom of the fruit before you start mixing it in? I know I have. It does, does bear some resemblance to that, an overall nice cream colored body with these little hints these little tricklings of purple that have been added to the forearms, the torso area, and then even also into the leg as well. We don't see stuff like this too often. And when we don't see stuff like this too often, it certainly makes predators like this very unique. They stand out. One of the things I really like about them. Also liking the fact, going back to it, is that this enforcer also has one of the more unique dread paintings being that it's almost more of a brown. It's something you would almost expect to be a constant that all the Predators would normally have black dreads, but this one does actually have brown, and I like that. There is a placement on the back, a little notch here, that really doesn't go for anything. If you look at the disc, for example, there's no connector tab, obviously. The disc would be belonging down here if he had an extra one, and there's no tab point from what I can see on the spear. Not that I'm visibly noticing though. So there's nothing that really attaches here. Likely this was just a carryover from an existing mold that we had seen before. Let's go ahead our best to take the head off. Again, we wanna be very, very careful. This is certainly one of those predators where time, patience, don't get overly aggressive with it either. And we just wanna pop it off the ball joint. There it is, there it is, right off and this remains unscathed I like that like unscathed 
head sculpts, certainly ones that aren't going to break on me. And then we'll go ahead and just replace the head sculpt here. And putting it back in place, certainly with also the, pa the plasma caster over here, can be a little bit trickier. Now I feel like this is a similar head sculpt, if not the exact same head sculpt that we got with the classic Predator, the Jungle Hunter Predator. Paint, of course, has been afforded slightly differently to this one, but overall I get the same sort of feel that this is the Predator from uh, the same head sculpt as the Jungle Hunter. And again, if you want to display him then with the removed helmet, you can certainly do that. Just kind of wedge it in between his fingers. Or you may also want to put it in more of the gripping hand just so it don't, doesn't actually come off, you know. Uh, on the side, he's got the retractable gauntlet blades. These are little brittle plastic. And something, unfortunately, that you have to come across doing sometimes is when you are replacing the hands, I always find, always find it difficult to get your hand in there to pull the hand out of the socket of the, uh, the Predator arm there. Ultimately, I just always worry that I'm gonna clip this, because if you can hear that, yeah, it's a little bit of a more brittle plastic. Unfortunately though, and ironically so, he doesn't come with any variations to the hands on that side. The only other hand he comes with is this hand here, which would really belong over here. He doesn't really have the means to hold anything on this side, because he only has the one gripping hand on this side. So for that reason, obviously, it's going to be a no-brainer as to which side you're going to display accessories on this particular figure. Other things we can quickly look at, and then we'll beeline our attention over to the blood, the bad blood, is, of course, he's got the detonation. Now, the detonation has not been triggered. You can see there is nothing actually painted in there, but it still has a working component, something I always do appreciate. The tubings have remained sev uh, somewhat if not perfectly intact. You gotta be a little bit careful when you are moving stuff like this, that when you are moving the arms out, for example, or even bending the elbow. These are very soft plastic. You gotta be careful that you don't actually pull those, rip those, just overall break them. Uh, by the way, looking at the articulation on this guy, I almost forgot his articulation. His head rotates back and forth, hinges up and down. The trick, uh, it seems, of pushing down that plasma caster seems to have done the trick. Doesn't look like it's going anywhere, that's good. Arms go forward, arms go back, arms go out. A swivel on the bicep, although while being very mindful of the tubing here. Double hinge on the elbow, this is where you're gonna come into problems. Hinging the elbow makes this start, starts making this a little on the tight side, so be careful that you don't actually pull this from itself. The arms, the hands rotate all the way around hinging back and forth. Did I also forget to mention, I may have also forgot to mention, he has a double hinge on the elbow. One hinge there, one hinge right there. Upper torso ball joint, lower torso ball joint, legs split, legs go forward, legs go back, swivel cut at the top cut of the thigh. He has not one, but two hinges on the knee. And then finally, he's got a hinge on the foot, which also ankle rockets back and forth. A decent enough looking figure. What brings my interest level to him a little higher than say the default of Predator figures that we get so often is the paint swap out. Of course the helmet goes a long way as well that it makes things very unique even though we've sort of treaded on this head sculpt before. This is definitely a unique looking Predator because of the new paint application so I really do like this one quite a bit. Moving our attention over to Personally speaking, my favorite of the Predators is going to be the Bad Blood. Now, we are going to look at some of the accessories that are going to come included with the figure. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't have as much the, the advanced looking accessories. In fact, actually most of his accessories are a little bit more cruder, a little bit more basic. One of which is sort of uh, a very primitive looking spear. Imagine he would just be throwing that at whatever he's looking to kill, and uh, it's like I said, it kind of look, it kind of mimics like a bamboo, uh, you know, handle. Even though if you look at it closely, there, it's clearly not bamboo, but it's sort of the vibe I get when I look at it. Nice looking spear on the end, sort of these little extra s extensions sticking out from the pole, just kind of give it a more primitive look to it. Digging that. Also comes included with a rather nice, rather bloodied looking uh, knife. And while it isn't necessarily serrated, you can see that there's a little bit of curves and 
uh, areas to the blade in which that certainly would inflict damage when that was impaled or embedded into the flesh of another predator or another human, for example, or a human in general. It's still simplistic. You can sort of see where it's it's almost like he's forged it directly from metal, but then the end somehow looks still very much bone-like, and it looks like he's wrapped it off as well. A very, like, almost crude, rushed, last-minute uh, effort to make, like, a maybe something he had already had, and he quickly just made it into more of a, a hand weapon. Perhaps it actually could have also even been something like not necessarily a gauntlet, but something along those lines. Found something like this and quickly crafted it into just a little hand weapon. Love the additional blood that they've added to the bottom handle of the bottom portion of the blade. Just overall, it's all those little small details I certainly appreciate. Also comes included with a hyperdisc. Now again, you could really decide which one you want to go with. It's not specifically allocated to one over the other, but I think he probably is using existing weapons. He doesn't have anything more advanced, certainly not to the level that Enforcer has. So I would imagine he would have more just the regular run of the mill hyper blade, the hyper little hyper disc. And it could attach in theory. I always say in theory because sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't, but they're supposed to fit right in there. And sometimes they fare better than others. It all depends on the figure. Like you could, for example, put it on the Enforcer and it could just tuck in there as well. But they never, it almost seems as if they're not wide enough, this area here, to properly fit the hyper disc, the little blade throwing discs in there. So he does come with that. This is pretty cool. Uh, he comes with a series of severed heads. And these are really neat, but I feel like they're a little on the small side. They're supposed to be, I think as far as I know, they're supposed to be characters that were from the uh, the comic in which Bad Blood killed. I mean, he didn't even really extract the skulls, you can see, just really slice the front of the face right off and put it onto a little hook. It's gruesome, but I feel like the heads might be a little on the small side. I mean, if you compare it to the size of, say, a predator head, we'll just sort of take this one here. Now I know Predators considerably are a lot bigger, but I feel like the head sculpts are maybe a little too small. At the very least, if you have put it next to a regular seven inch figure, even though scale wise, it wouldn't be proportionally correct. I feel like the head sculpts could be a little on the small side, but they are very nicely painted. And you can see there they are, you have the little hooks on the back. The intent is, I think if you switch it, flip the figure around, there's a little loop here that you can hook the heads onto. Sort of an additional trophy that the bad blood can just carry around with them. Luckily, these are a little softer, so if you have a tough time getting them in place immediately, so it'll just bend the hook and eventually fits perfectly in place. It's a nice little small touch. And speaking of nice little small touches, you've also got the little dreadlock. This little tiny dreadlock, and even though it's not really intended to be held, nor do I see a place on either of the Predators where this could be attached, uh, this was also something, a little nod to the comic. Um, I believe this this was torn off the, the Bad Blood Predator, and uh, you've got this little extra trinket, this little extra souvenir that NECA has included with the figure. Nice. I mean, it's certainly going to be something that I'm going to lose, but I appreciate again Again, I appreciate the fact that they would include that. He also comes included with uh, a pair of skulls. Now, from what I can see, I don't see a place on him. And I've looked around. There should be like a little hook. Something that should be sticking out in which you can hang, you can dangle these from. I thought maybe up at the top of the collar, there might have been like a little hook. Obviously, that's a little piercing, so it's not going to go there. I don't see a place, not yet that I don't in which this can actually mount anywhere, unless you mounted it just on the little predator skull, but obviously it's not gonna go there. So he comes with this, the little extra skulls. They are looped, obviously, intentionally, but I just, again, I don't, I don't see a place right now, at least. Maybe I'll come across this later. I could spend a good several minutes just trying to look to see where there was a place to, to mount these. And as far as I can see so far, I don't see a place. So we'll just move on from there. Some extra little skulls always go a long way. We'll just put him down for a second here. 
comes with also a series of interchangeable hands. Problem once again will be the gauntlets trying to change the hand out just because that brittle plastic, but it comes with two variations of the hands. One already gripping, I've already changed that out from this one to this one. And then on this hand, I could have in theory switched it out to this one. But the hardest part again is trying to get your hand in there because you want to be able to pull the hand out, but you certainly also don't want to be breaking the now three blades as opposed to the two. And these blades just retract out. Um, they retract out, but I also noticed that, as you probably saw as well, the blades also come out all together too. They just pop right out. So it's sort of a loose track system. Pulling it too much will affect and cause the blades just to come pop right out. So you might want to be a little careful when you are doing that. Last but certainly not least, before we get into the bad blood predator, is an alternate head sculpt. Likely reused from a previous predator. I'm not going to fault NECA toys necessarily for reusing an existing mold. If they can, why won't they? Which predator it may have been, like I said, you could really take your pick. Now here added some additional purple, which almost kind of mimics that really of the, uh, the Enforcer Predator. This one has its mouth completely open. Some additional uh, tattooing that's been added to the kind of the domed head there. And this one also has the black dreads, the giveaway that it's supposed to go with bad blood so it's that um, I don't honestly think I'm just gonna move these accessories out of the way as well I don't think I'll find myself ever changing the head in fact I really only change the head sculpt for the sake of this review nine times out of ten usually I'll display the figures anyways with their given helmets just because they are so unique to one another in the comics I don't believe Blood actually had a removable helmet. This may have been something that NECA Toys incorporated for their figure release. I think in most, if not all, the comics, Bad, Bad Blood is actually unmasked. But I do like this. If this is a unique head sculpt, because it has certainly been a while since I've read that comic, if it is a unique head sculpt, props should certainly be given to NECA Toys. I adore this helmet. It kind of actually looks like it looks like something that should be a ground vehicle. I love the sloped nature of the front grille of its mouth. You can see that there is an eye that's peeking through. One of the visible visor lenses have broken. You can see all this cracking and stuff all inside. I love the little ridged, almost it almost looks like a crown really, that's making up the top portion of its helmet. It's a splendid, splendid, if not one of maybe my top 10 favorite helmets that I've seen with the Predator. There's like a lot to admire here and you could probably certainly see why I left this guy for the last. He is adorned in different spinal cords. He's got a Predator skull mounted on the side of his shoulder for example. He's got some skulls there placed very conveniently as knee pads which I don't know how that how comfortable that necessarily would be. Again, some bones running down the sides of its legs. It's a spectacular looking sight. And then of course you have the addition of the heads now just dangling as he's walking around. Now this one does have a track system in theory for a plasma caster. This one doesn't come with a plasma caster. So what it does get, however, though, is all this extra armament and the glorious additional coloring of what I could almost describe as almost like a reddish copper. It looks really good here, contrasting to like the dark blacks, for example, the sort of dark grays, and then the overall coloring here of that slightly darker purple. It's not quite the same purple to Enforcer, a slight darker purple. And you got like that little ring there, which I think is a really nice touch. He is easily, could easily fit probably within my top 10 favorite Predators that NECA have released. And again, you can probably see why I left this guy last. So his head articulation swivels back and forth. It hinges up and down. It doesn't sort of have the limitations that Enforcer has because really there's not extra stuff in the way. There is stuff, but it's certainly not in the way of the Predator's head. The arms hinge outward. Uh, you can rotate the arms technically all the way around. He has the little tubing that comes out from his helmet, but from what I can see, there's no placement for it. There's this little notch on the back, but its I think it's too tight, and it's really not the correct shape. So I think it's just something that's going to just wander aimlessly on this particular Predator. There's also a little notch right here, 
initially thinking, oh, maybe is this is the place where I can attach the skulls. No, there's just this little tap point here for not anything that I can really tell. I mean, it doesn't look like any of the accessories from what I can see have little tab or connector points to them, neither of which would attach here or here on the Predator. Anyways, we will we move further along. So he does have an upper torso ball joint. He's got a lower torso ball joint. He does also have this little skirt that's attached by a cording, but the cording is also plastic. It's not elasticized. So feeling as if you could stretch it, it's really not what you want to be doing. It's plastic. Uh, legs go forward, legs go back, legs go out. He has a swivel on the top cut of his thigh double hinge on the knee, despite for the fact he's got these big, very awkwardly, let, let, let's just let that sit in for a second. How awkward you think it would be to kneel down on someone else's skull? I'll leave that for you with the thought for 2019. The legs rotate, or the feet rotate all the way around. They also rock back and forth, and they hinge up and down. I didn't ultimately change out the head sculpt for bad blood. Not simply a case where I just didn't want to. Well, I guess it is a simply a case of I didn't want to. Both head sculpts are so good with their helmet counterparts. But in all honesty, as much as I like this head sculpt, I, I would be doing a disservice, I think, to bad blood to even remove that fantastic helmet. It almost looks like something we would have saw from like Road Warrior or Mad, one of the Mad Max films. Love what they've done here. Love so much more what they've done there. I always love me some NECA Toys Predator figures, but every once in a while there'll be a set that comes out that sort of just makes me sit back and think, thank goodness that NECA Toys are producing Predator figures and not any other company. The time, the dedication, and the loyalty that that company has put into this brand definitely shows for the longevity of how long these figures have been coming out. And every once in a while, like I said, you'll see a figure that will stand out from the pack, make them unique from really all the other figures that you may have in your collection. And while I do like Enforcer, it's really the look of bad blood that has me excited the most. He's got some unique elements to him that I haven't really seen in any other Predator figure, and I absolutely adore that helmet. So much so I was doing a disservice, I think, if I actually was to remove it and replace it with the unmasked helmet. I also like the fact that NECA Toys for these figures did give us both alternate head sculpts and for Enforcer also gave us a removable helmet. Just an extra icing on the cake. They have enough accessories as well that I think this set's worth picking up. Even if you have a whole ton of Predator figures in your collection, I think this still is a set that's going to open your eyes to some of the creativity that NECA Toys can put into their figures. Uh, either way, if you guys are interested in picking this set up for yourself, it should be available now in comic book stores. Today we were having a look at the new NECA Toys Predator. This was Bad Blood versus Enforcer. Love Bad Blood. If you guys haven't had a chance, why don't you hit that little subscribe button down below. We're coming very close to 300,000 subscribers. Could you believe that? And as we get closer and closer uh, into uh, February, this also will mark 10 years of doing this on YouTube. Can you believe that? 10 years of doing reviewing on YouTube. If you guys are new to this channel, let me know down below. And certainly stay tuned, guys, because certainly more videos will be also coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.